How amazing does my hair look right now? I literally just woke up. And by wake up I mean I wasn't, I was downstairs on grinder for like two and a half hours. Got nothing from it, no action whatsoever, which is pretty normal. I'm 31, so I'm a child of the 90s. I grew up in the 90s, rollerblading was a huge thing of my childhood. Many, many years were spent with either grazed knees or being ridiculed for wearing knee pads, shoulder pads, elbow pads, wrist pads, bum pads iPads, all of the things. And I recently came to realize that TV obviously has changed and the kids shows that I grew up on don't exist anymore. And I went into this YouTube click hole and I started YouTubing these old uh, kids TV shows from the 90s. My God, some of them are morbid. Like I remember a show called Plasmo. Plasmo. And it was a claymation show and it was about like this little alien blob called Plasmo and it, w it sort of had a very dark crystal feel to it. Like it was a bit somber and then when I watched it back as an adult it made me cry. You mustn't cry Plasmo. We're in the desert. We have to conserve water. I can't help it pasty. Like it has these beautiful messages and it's only 13 like five minute episodes. Do yourself a favor, I'm gonna put the link, I'll put all the links to these shows in the description. Plasmo, show your kit, go back and watch it. If you don't remember it, go you will remember it. If you're a child in Australia of the 90s, you will remember this show. You'll remember it because it had, you know Jar Jar Binks from the Star Wars? It had a character sort of, like that same sort of fleshy color, except his mouth looked like a virgin. He had a virgin mouth, like it was a lady part mouth and only one big eye. It was characters for kids TV shows in the 90s are messed up. Lift off. Do you remember lift off? <laughs> they have a doll called EC. So lift off is um like it's got it's a mixture of like real people acting and then they cut to little clips and little animations and little puppets and they've got all this t it's just a multimedia mix of everything and one of the main characters has this doll called EC now EC let me bring up a photo of EC right no eyes no, no facial features i.e. slender man's baby Terrifying. I don't really remember being terrified as a kid when I watched it though. I thought EC, EC plays like a loving character. Doesn't talk, it just like moves. And as an adult, mortifying. As a kid, I thought EC was fine. But Liftoff was incredible. I remember they had a, like a, a, a hedge, like a bush. Beverly, and it was this green plant with an eye on the end, and then you'd go into the eye and it would play some nature documentary. And then there was a lift called Lotus, and you go into this lift and it talks to you, and then it takes you to these different worlds and these like little different little documentary snippets play. It was an incredible show. I have to say though, I think my favorite one that, um, uh, besides Pl Plasma, I really enjoyed as an adult. Um, the, a similar one is called uh, Trapdoor. And it, it had this little blue character called Burke. You may remember it if I go, Burke, feed me. Burke, feed me. And it was this little claymation Burke character. It's a blob with legs and arms that had to feed this omnipotent monster that it, that it served in this castle in Transylvania or somewhere. And it's this fascinating, it's just, it was such an interesting show. Burke. Are you fiddling about with that trap door? Oh, no, sir. Certainly not, sir. No, as if I would. Don't. And he'd always open a trap door, which he was told not to open, and a thing would come out, and the episode was based on that thing. <gasps> Such a great show. If you've got kids, Plasmo, Lift Off, uh, Trap Door, they're all on YouTube. I found them all on YouTube. Johnson and Friends, that's all on YouTube. Johnson and Friends. Do you know Johnson is another name for your penis? Johnson and Friends. <laughs> Toys that come to life. And they had, uh, Johnson was a pink elephant. That's a bit weird, so like Johnson had the dick. And then you had an accordion who was like this female and she was like the su supporting, like she was like, we liked her. You had Alfred the water bottle, 
who was annoying because he was like an old man and he looked weird. Bit weird, right? Oh, have I not, I haven't even gotten to weird. You thought the EC doll was messed up? We had a show called Mully Grubs. If you're an Australian from the 90s, you'll know Molly Grubbs from the fact it was a woman who only had features for a face. You couldn't see anything but her eyes, her nostrils and her mouth and her eyebrows. And uh, it, it, looking back on it, is the most terrifying thing. And they pitched her voice up really high. I really liked that little green tree frog. <laughs> When I visited the museum, we saw some little green frogs in a big glass tank. Right, again, as a kid, laughing along, watching mully grubs, oh, having a great time. As an adult, reflecting on that, horrifying. I don't understand. Adults would have come up with these concepts and ideas. And for me, it's like a horror movie. What kid would want to see a Slender Man doll or a woman with a high-pitched voice and, like, no face? We also have a show called Mr. Squiggle. Now, I, I don't think Mr. Squiggle is in any way morbid. It was like, that was like the Australian pinnacle of TV. Like, Mr. Squiggle was probably the first children's uh, TV show. And it was this puppet who had a pencil for a nose. And people would send in these squiggly lines, right? They'd just send in a squiggle and he would turn it into this masterpiece. And you know, like, oh, Beverly from Maribyrnong has sent in a few dots and a line. And then you have this woman who stands there and sort of talks to the puppet and the puppet draw, like physically draws. Now, if you're familiar with Mr. Squiggle, I just assume that the puppet here, right, who's like up above, is manipulating this puppet and trying to draw. And I, like the skill. But what I learnt, and I didn't realise this is, Mr. Squiggle has like a really tall green hat. And in fact, the tall green hat goes out of frame and it's the dude is actually holding onto the hat. And I think someone else is puppeteering while this guy draws with the hat and the hat's attached to the pencil. It's all very complicated, but a brilliant idea for TV. And I loved Mr. Squiggle. And it has a, a white, uh, like a chalkboard that the picture sits on. And it's a really grumpy chalkboard. And I can really relate to that as an adult because it always says, hurry up. I mean, this whole video came from a comment that I read and it was, um, someone thought I was going to make a video about an old TV show called Changing Rooms. Now that TV show was when I was a bit older, I think I was in high school, and it was this show. It's, oh, what a, it's a friendship destroying show. Changing Rooms, right? Hi, I'm Susie Wilkes. So basically the premise of the show is friends, neighbours or even relatives swap houses to redesign a room at each other's place. They get a limited amount of time to complete the job and have to stick to a tight budget. Two couples come together and the couples are friends, right? They know each other. Then at the end, surprise, they do a room reveal. Oh my God, it's always horrific. It's always the worst. It's people who have the most opposite in sort of style that you can imagine. So velvet walls go on one and this woman wants a minimalist. And then the reveal happens and the couples try and be sort of like, oh, it's beautiful. One, two, three. <gasps> wow. Oh, wow. Excellent. It does look old fashioned. Very and nice. Light. Very nice. I'm Yay. Our friendship's never been stronger. And you just know when they go cut that the person's like, F***ing Tim. And then the credits roll. Two, three, open. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, medieval, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. Oh, wow.